Where's the bear? Whose blonde life is it anyway? In association with Sterling Creations and VIP Tech Productions present Ask Donna. Donna Jodden answers your questions and offers you tips and tricks on being an author, an expert, a sight loss coach, and an advocate. Hello, 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 and I am Donna J. Jodhan, your host for Ask Donna, the Ask Donna show, which I have been producing and recording since last year. I think it's my anniversary month, and I forgot to mention this um, when I started into my February shows. Never too late, but here I am. And again, I'd like to thank all of you who have taken the time to come in and listen to my shows and to provide me with feedback, with thoughts, with suggestions. Thank you so very much for helping me to reformat my shows and to move along. I know that it is so important for me to listen and to provide you with things that you want to hear, not things that I wanted to talk about. And this is why the February shows have been reformatted. I've taken the time to reformat them and to rejig them so that they are more interesting, less boring, and you won't be snoring so early on in my show. So thank you for helping me with all of this. Thank you for the growing feedback. And I encourage you to keep this feedback coming by sending me an email or emails to askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com. That is ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. Thank you, Victor, for giving me the opportunity to come in once again this week and for helping me to reformat my Ask Donna shows. And I hope that everybody is going to continue to listen and I hope that I continue to satisfy your listening pleasures. So for the first week of February, we started with Ask the Blogger, the Ask the Bloggers show, which is a new portion of my Ask Donna shows. And for the second week, we continued on with Ask the Coach, which is a carryover from uh, what I was doing in last year. But I've rejigged the show a wee bit to include more tips more relevant tips for you and for this week we're going to be having a new segment and it's called ask the homemaker this is a new segment and i'm really really excited about this segment because i think you're going to enjoy it i think you're going to find some tips that are really really interesting and useful for you It's not about the kitchen alone, folks. It's about all kinds of other things, okay? And for the fourth week, which would be next week, it's going to be all about Ask the Reviewer. It's about, uh, you know, me talking about a book review and a product review. Right then, I think it's time to get down to business, okay? And for this week, we're going to be talking about some common uses for baking soda. Don't take the box of baking soda lightly, folks. Baking soda is a very, very powerful little box that contains powder, which you can use to do all kinds of things other than what baking soda is advertised for. Okay. Ooh, just a sec. Before I go on with this, I forgot to mention. Please tune in at at the end of this show to hear my mental stretch and my bento basket. I always keep forgetting 
to mention that I need for you to tune in at the end of the show or to stay with me until the end of the show. So let's get back to some very useful ways for the use of baking soda, okay? Common uses for baking soda. And if you make a paste of baking soda and water, you can use this paste to treat insect bites. Yes, indeed, this paste will help you to deal with itching whenever you get an insect bite. Okay? You can use baking soda along with a plastic scouring pad to clean your cups of stains from coffee and tea. Okay? So again, you can use baking soda, put it on, put a bit of it on a scouring pad and use it to clean tea and coffee stains from your cups. I've used this several times and I can tell you it works like a charm. When you use your scouring pad with a little baking soda on it and you scrub away at those stains, voila! The stains are gone in minutes. Give this one a try. And the scouring pad should be a plastic scouring pad. Okay? So, the other thing you can do with uh, baking soda is that you can add one third cup to your laundry, okay? Um, add it to your wash cycle and it acts as a bleaching agent, okay? And it, your laundry would spell cleaner and it would just smell nice. So add one third cup to your laundry cycle to f and you will find that baking soda is a good bleaching agent as well as helping your laundry to smell cleaner. Okay? And you can use baking soda to remove black scuff marks on your floor. Okay, put some baking soda or dissolve it in some water and then scrub away at those black scuff marks on your floor and voila! You will see that these marks come out really easily. You can use baking soda on a sponge, right? Sprinkle some baking soda on a sponge and use it to clean your bathtubs and your bathtub doors. You will see like magic how this works. Again, after you've done this, wipe it dry. So again, put some or sprinkle some baking soda on a sponge, a damp sponge that is. You then use it to scrub your tub or you use it to scrub the tub doors. After you've done that, you wipe your tub doors dry and you will see there is a big difference. Okay, if you find that your dishcloths or sponges have a sour-like smell, soak it in some water with some baking soda dissolved and you will be very, very surprised and pleased to see that that sour smell goes away, okay? The next thing, you can use baking soda like this. Dissolve some baking soda drops in some water and you can use this to scrub the inside of your microwave. Well, I should say deodorize the inside of your microwave. So just dissolve the baking soda in some water, a few drops of baking soda, dissolve it in, your, in some water, and then use it 
Just use it to wipe the inside of your microwave and this will deodorize the smells of your microwave. Works again like a charm because I use it all the time. All right, I hope that these tips that I have given you for uses of baking soda is going to be very helpful to you. I find them helpful and I'd be interested to get your feedback as to what you think. Send me an email to askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com and tell me what you think. Again, ask Donna on the blindlife at gmail.com. Okay? Right then, it is time, is now time for our mental stretch. All right. And again, you can read more about me by visiting www.donnajohnhen.com. You will read about me as a coach, as an advocate, as an author, as a blogger. But this segment I'm really, really excited about because it's a brand new segment and you will learn all about different ways to use different products to do different things other than what they are presently used for. Okay, let's get back to the mental stretch. And for this week, I want to tell you that the mental stretch is very, very important when it comes to being able to clear your minds and your imaginations of cobwebs and clutter and to create and spark your, your creative juices. Sorry, to stimulate and spark your creative juices. I call this the MIC principle, M-I-C. Clearing your minds of clutter and cobwebs along with your imagination. So M is for mind, I is for imagination, and C is your creative juices. It's being able to spark and stimulate your creative juices. Hey, if you can have stretches for your arms, your neck, your stomach, your back, your leg, your toes, your heels, why not the mental stretch? which is what I've been using for several years now, and trust me, it works. You can use your mental stretch at any time of the day. I use my mental stretch first thing in the morning. You can use it after breakfast, mid-morning, before lunch, after lunch, mid-afternoon, just before you go to bed. Give it a try, okay? So, we're going to use one of our senses for this week's mental stretch. And for this week, it's all about the sense of taste. Let's think of the taste of honey. Mmm, 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 mmm. Sweet, cool honey. Just put a bit of it on your tongue and see what happens next. The honey is sweet, sticky, and cool. And you could chase this honey down with a bit of water. The taste of honey, it sure tickles your mind and your imagination. And it also tickles your creative juices. I use this and I only tell you things that I use or that other friends of mine or family use as well that are effective. Okay? Taste of wine, I'm sure that most of you listening in will agree that the taste of wine, mm -mm, one of your favorite glasses of wine, could be red wine, white wine, sparkling wine. You can use this glass of wine anytime you like. You can use it while relaxing at a meal with friends. It does indeed. Clear your mind and your imagination of cobwebs and clutter. And it does spark and stimulate your, your creative juices. How about a hot drink at this time of the year, at this time of the month? Nice hot drink to warm the tummy. 
the tummy may be grumbling a bit and you don't know what to do. The one thing I will tell you is when you have a grumbling tummy, it sure prevents your mind and your imagination and your creative juices from functioning properly. So a hot drink is just what the doctor orders. Think of this hot drink going down your throat nice and smooth into your tummy. Yummy tummy, okay? What I will tell you is that the smell of a hot drink also helps. So you can combine your sense of taste and your sense of smell for this hot drink. Right then, we are coming to the end of my show. Before I give you my Bento Basket suggestions for this week, please do not forget to send me an email at askdawn 